Hello, we're going to take a brief look at Theodore Jericho. Uh, brief for many reasons. Uh, for one thing, he doesn't live for very long. He has a very short lifespan, as you can see. It's uh, what roughly about 33 years. Uh, the importance of Jericho moving forward, though, uh, is really one of these things that, that needs to be measured, especially when you're looking at future generations of artists, uh, specifically the Impressionists, which is kind of the greater focus of these lectures. Uh, again, Theodore Jericho uh, influences the next generation of artists uh, in Eugene Delacroix, but uh, he also starts to do some of the things that we associate with some of these later artists uh, during the Impressionist period, and also people like Gustave Courbet uh, that really kind of bring about these new ideas of modern art. Uh, when we look at Jericho's background, the, the paintings that, that are really the, the big first successful paintings for him are actually military paintings. Uh, the military theme is something that he kind of centers around for most of his art uh, career, and only later do we really see the impact of, of the major work that we will be looking at, the Raft of the Medusa. Uh, we, we have um, an, an officer of the Imperial Horse Guards uh, guards Charging, excuse me, uh, and Wounded, wounded Soldier Leaving the Field of Battle. Uh, what you notice from these is the, the, the very, very strong use of color. This is thought to be influenced uh, by Peter Paul Rubens. Most, when you look at uh, realistic art from this period, it really kind of comes from two different directions. Either you have Rubens uh, or Jacques-Louis David. Uh, another thing we see a lot of from Jericho is paintings of horses. And again, uh, this isn't completely uncommon, but uh, Horse in the Storm is kind of a strange painting if we think about uh, this animal and the proximity of, of what else is occurring. But again, when we look at the background of, of Theodore Jericho, uh, you don't really see this, this huge amount uh, of impact as, as we will see with his later work. Again, uh, he kind of moves away from what we think of as traditional paintings. I imagine he would have had a good career uh, continuing to paint things like horses uh, and cavalrymen and that type of thing, but uh, we see a dramatic change that occurs at, at a point in his life uh, when it comes to the art itself, a uh, white Arabian horse, very beautiful. We have kind of this Baroque effect of, of the light, and it almost seems like uh, the light is emanating from the horse itself as it's kind of emanating out from the darkness. Again, uh, these beautiful, beautiful paintings of horses, but even when we look at the subject matter of these two, uh, we do see this kind of intense darkness, uh, not only within the painting itself, but uh, just in terms of the subject matter. Again, a white Arabian horse, but uh, the horse almost looks frightened in some sense, uh, rather than this majestic animal uh, on a plain filled with grass. Instead, most of the composition is, is very, very dark, uh, and the white horse itself, this emblem of light, uh, as we kind of go up to the face, we see uh, kind of this, this fear. Uh, we really, uh, when, when, when we look at uh, Jericho's career, one of the major influences we of course see is when he travels to Italy uh, and he sees the work of Michelangelo, uh, I would imagine specifically within uh, the Sistine Chapel. If we look at the, the, um, the, the inlands of the underworld that we have here on the far right corner of the Last Judgment and Michelangelo's handling uh, of not only the flesh but also uh, the expressions and again, we need to remember uh, this is this was first painted coming out of the Renaissance uh, into kind of the Mannerist time period uh, leading into the Baroque. So again, when we look at this, this is kind of uh, uh, definitely a direct prelude to the major work that we associate uh, with Theodore Jericho, and as I mentioned, it is the Raft of the Medusa. Uh, he does paint other things, but with such an incredibly short lifespan, uh, it really is this one central painting that we look at uh, as being his masterpiece, but also this tremendous influence on a different generation of artists. Uh, this would be classified from the Romantic period, uh, and again, this comes from uh, one of the, the importance in terms terms of the discussion at hand is the fact that this it features uh, a contemporary event uh, rather than a historical allegory or that type of thing, even though the size of the canvas would really dictate that it would be uh, in that type of classification. 
When we think of uh, the raft of the Medusa, what actually occurs uh, is we have a boat named the Medusa, and, and if I remember the story correctly, it was traveling with two other ships, uh, and it runs ground, and what they do is they, they construct this giant raft uh, for essentially the, 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 the common people, while the captain and, and the upper class people take uh, the lifeboats and, and uh, essentially escape. Uh, this is a diagram of the raft itself, and you can see uh, there was 147 people stranded, and after 13 days, only 15 of those people had survived. So this was a major, major tragedy uh, uh, that occurred. And again, it was very well publicized and at the time was kind of this mark of shame uh, for many people who lived in France. Jericho goes through an enormous amount of, of studies and preparation uh, for this canvas. Uh, uh, we have just a wealth of studies, drawings that lead into it. Uh, and again, this was really kind of his major focus in terms of art. Uh, he really got overwhelmed by this story and, and just went as far into it as he could. He interviewed the survivors uh, that he could find every little aspect of the boat. Uh, uh, he tried to research, he even went as far as to have a raft actually constructed, uh, a model of the raft in order to kind of understand the perspective of the painting itself. So he really went into this painting uh, with everything. This was this massive creation that, that he worked, uh, not only in terms of research, but also in terms of composition. Uh, here are a few more of the sketches. Most notable on the right, uh, as we mark our way back to the painting, we have this image of this old man and the idea is that uh, the old man is essentially grieving over his child, over uh, the loss of the next generation, and this is type of, of, of face he would make. Again, when we look at the painting, it's very interesting uh, to see the complexity of emotions that Jericho is able uh, to capture in this one, one work itself. And again, it's very interesting if you think of the, the, the previous work that he did, uh, kind of mixed with the, 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 the helpings of Michelangelo's study, uh, leading forward to this major work. And again, we really don't see anything uh, quite this dynamically large uh, uh, from from his catalog before. It is also known that Jericho uh, studied corpses. He actually looked at cadavers and, and things of this nature and did studies and paintings of these uh, in order to get the, the correct posturing of the of the work itself done. Again, uh, he really was kind of trying to make a totality of a painting. Uh, the other aspect of the painting that we really need to remark is that it was a political situation as much as anything. And again, when we think of a lot of uh, the modern art that comes after this, uh, or even modern art in general, the idea is sometimes that it has this political association. Uh, the idea was that the captain was kind of falsely put into his position uh, and that the overall government was really to blame uh, uh, for, for essentially the disaster. It turns out that that was in fact not true, but again, that carried some weight with it. When we look at the painting itself, uh, that older gentleman that I was speaking of, uh, he is located uh, in, in the bottom left corner. And when we look at the composition, what Jericho has done, uh, he's, he's really almost followed this classical model. You can see two very distinct pyramid type shapes. Uh, one is formed uh, essentially by the survivors forming this mountain and waving. And if you look very, very closely, uh, off in the distance, you can see a ship that actually, uh, I believe, is the, is the saving ship. And as the story goes, I believe they wave at the ship uh, and it doesn't even notice them the first time. And it's not until the second time uh, that they see it. We have uh, an image, a surviving image of the painting in the salon. And again, just to give you an idea of, uh, uh, again, where the painting is located in the proximity of being hung in, in and also in terms of scale of the people, uh, we do have to remember that in the salon setting that this is going to be shown with multiple other works. And again, when you think about these poor other paintings uh, stuck up against the raft of the Medusa and how they must have just seemed uh, the most like insincere or awkward thing imaginable in comparison to this massive, massive painting uh, dictating this very, very brutal, difficult subject matter uh, to look at. And again, 
this is something to be thought of too is that uh, he's, he's taking a contemporary idea and really really showing it uh, in the most brutal way imaginable from this we have just a few more paintings from Jericho as I mentioned uh, he dies very early but from this he actually goes to uh, a different subject matter where he actually goes and paints uh, people with mental disease and his idea uh, is, is again that, that he is going to paint them in such a way that you can almost tell what the mental disease is. This is a uh, woman suffering from obsessive en uh, envy from 1822 and again uh, I believe the story is that he had a friend that was a uh, a, a mental worker if you were a person who worked with the mentally ill so he kind of had access to these individuals but again uh, it is always very interesting to think with Theodore Jericho uh, where he could have gone uh, what we have here is I believe on the left we have a woman uh, who actually has a gambling problem and then uh, the man on the right is a man who believes he has some type of military ranking and these are really just three examples from I think around 10 paintings that he had on the subject altogether, excuse me. Uh, but again, his life is, is cut rather short. Uh, uh, he dies from complications, uh, from disease. And again, we are kind of left to wonder what he would have done next. Uh, we know that he was working on two larger compositions. Uh, one of them, again, kind of around the same morality uh, uh, aspects of of what we saw before uh, with, with the Raft of the Medusa de de dedicated around uh, the idea of the African slave trade. Uh, so we just have this one painting really, uh, this one major work by, by uh, Jericho that we look at, the Raft of the Medusa, and again, uh, this is uh, uh, as important a painting because it influences the next generation of artists. Uh, if you look in the foreground, there is of course the person turned down, uh, face were down, and this is thought to be Eugene Delacroix. Uh, the next artist that's really kind of worth examining uh, in the conversation of, of, of what leads into the, the Impressionist period, uh, and also artists that kind of bring about what we think of as the modern dynamic uh, of art.